Hello, welcome back to Jorb's Scribbles on the screen and talks about every card in the Slay the Spire compendium. Talking about Body Slam, one of the most interesting ironclad attacks. This is a common attack, costs one, it deals damage equal to your block and upgrades to be zero cost. Cool. Immediately, when you look at Body Slam, I think the natural thing to do is to think, oh my gosh, I can make a deck which makes like 500 block and then I can play the Body Slam and it deals 500 damage to an enemy. Um, and that's a very sensible thing to be thinking, for sure. But the tricky question with Body Slam is why does your deck that can make 500 block need to play Body Slam? Um, why can't it kill the enemy with like a bronze scales or something? Because the thing about Body Slam is that you have to pick it and then you have to draw it lots of times. And if you have a deck that's focused on making 500 block, well, Body Slam doesn't help you make 500 block. It doesn't do much until you've made a lot of block already. So that's the really tricky thing with Body Slam. If you think about the different fights in Slay the Spire, some of them require very different things from others. And so in a giant head fight, if you have a deck that's all about making tons of block, um, Body Slam's probably just fine. You're gonna make lots of fight, lots of block, giant head is pretty slow in terms of getting started attacking you, and you're gonna play like a Body Slam or two and win. Cool, easy game. But what about the Reptomancer fight? On turn one, you're getting attacked for 18. A couple of wounds are getting put in your deck. So if you're intent on cycling the deck multiple times to like play and trench multiple times, all of a sudden you're drawing wounds. And then on turn two, you're getting attacked for 100. Uh, and two more wounds are getting put in your deck. And Body Slam maybe isn't helping in any way here. Uh, I don't know if your deck's trying to block for 100 there or, or, or what, how it's planning to survive, but Body Slam isn't an area of effect attack. So unless you're successfully killing Reptomancer outright, the best body slam can be doing there is killing one of the four daggers, which isn't nothing. But if you had an Immolate on your deck instead, or a Whirlwind perhaps, well, that card would be able to deal with turn two of the Reptomancer fight. And it also maybe could, coupled with a couple of strikes and maybe a spot weakness or something, it could deal enough damage to kill the heart or a time eater. And you wouldn't need a body slam in your deck at all. So. Thinking about how you add damage to a deck that can make a ton of block such that your damage is helping you in the fights where it's difficult to make tons of block is a tricky thing to wrap your mind around in this game, but it's something to def definitely keep in mind. This isn't a game where you're trying to make perfect archetypical decks because your opponents are so different from each other that even if you could make a perfect archetypical block deck, you'd still want to have one or two like magical bullet answers for the fights where that block strategy doesn't work that well. And so Body Slam can sometimes get in the way. Um, that said, it's often a very good card still. So um, it can be really nice if your block is temporary. Let's say you use Corruption, so you can only play all of your block cards once. So you can get like 150 block or 200 block. Well, that's not going to stick around very much in an Act 3 or Act 4 boss fight. And so maybe you need body slams to make sure that you can deal damage fast enough to win from there. Um, maybe you don't have a barricade or a calipers, and so your block is vanishing at the end of the turn. Well, in that situation, body slam plus dual wield plus could easily deal like 400 damage in one turn. And so, especially if you have something like Runic Pyramid or Corruption plus Dark Embrace, that can be a sensible way to turn your block into damage before it vanishes, potentially forever. If you have Value Block instead of Unfair Block, that can make Body Slam really good. So a deck that isn't about like getting 200 or 300 block and just being invincible forever, but rather it has like a couple copies of Imperbi impervious and maybe a power through plus which it's using to survive early turns while it sets something else up body slam can be really nice there it's like front loaded damage because as long as you draw it with one of those block cards it's dealing very good damage for one or zero energy it can take out an entire enemy by itself in some situations and also body slam can be worth picking up if you have no other damage at all so if you have a deck that's all about blocking and you haven't added any damage to it well body slam can obviously be really really good there um yeah but if your unfair block deck is really an unfair block deck sometimes it's better to just lean into making sure that your unfair block stuff goes off and making sure that you have answers to the things that are really good against your unfair block deck and not worrying too much about body slam. 
Um, a tricky thing about Body Slam is that it is quite difficult to take this card in the context of Act 1. It's not super great against Grandma Knob. It's not incredible against Sentries. It's actually pretty decent against Lagavulin. But often you start with six offensive cards, four defends, and an Ascender's Bane. So you're not drawing that much block per turn. And often you're wanting to add attacks to your deck before you're adding defends. And so if you look at this card halfway through Act 1, a decent amount of the time you just don't have enough block to support it at all. Now there are other ones where you've picked up a power through and a flame barrier by there, and Body Slam is actually a good card, and you want to make sure that you're noting those times too, but a lot of the time it's not going to be very good in Act 1. And that's the tricky thing about it as an attack. If it's not very good in Act 1, and it is okay once you get a really good block engine going, well a lot of the time you took damage to get you through Act 1 in the first half of Act 2, that is good enough to beat endgame if you have a good block engine anyway. And so if you already have a spot weakness, a demon form, um, I don't know, a searing blow, I, if you already have enough damage that you are able to beat Book of Stabbing or Slavers or something, and then you add in the ability to make a tremendous amount of block, you don't necessarily need to ever add more damage to your deck again you may very well have enough to beat the end game and the heart already. And adding more damage to your deck may just get in the way and make it harder for you to get your block engine going. So that's the important thing to keep in mind with this card. Uh, that said, it's obviously strong when it's very powerful, but this is a card where it's very easy to misjudge when it is powerful because there's a large zone, I think, where it's actually redundant and not useful, where people mistake it for being powerful. And there's also a decent zone where you're just getting value out of this. You're just a deck that makes like 15 block a turn quite often, and this can be a zero cost attack which deals 15, where it is really good, and you don't necessarily have any intention of ever having a barricade or 100 block. And I think people might be missing picking it up there a decent amount of the time. So, those are my thoughts about Body Slam. Hope you enjoyed. Cool. We'll see you next time.